It's the week we recognize and celebrate our senior citizens for their contribution to the prosperity of this great nation. The minister responsible for this segment of our population has lots in store. In addition to Saturday's church service and today's tree planting session across all parishes, there'll be a parish award ceremony on Thursday and an evening of entertainment on Saturday. National Grandparents Day will be celebrated on Sunday and next Monday, the island will observe International Day of Older Persons with a Parish Forum. For more information, visit the Ministry of Labor and Social Security at mlss.gov.jm. Hello everyone, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Welcome to this Monday edition of Jamaica Magazine. Motorists. East Avenue of Marcus Garvey Drive in Kingston is temporarily one way. Coming from Marcus Garvey Drive, motorists are only allowed to head north onto East Avenue. Also, motorists are not allowed to turn left from Balmoral Avenue onto Maxfield Avenue. Chisholm Avenue and Oakland Road are also one-way roads going west from Balmoral Avenue. New traffic signals have been installed to indicate the short-term changes to the road network of Kingston. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, September 24. Several wanted men are now in police custody following the seizure of three guns and 35 rounds of ammunition. This after the first today of a state of public emergency declared within parts of the St. Andrew South, Kingston Central and Kingston Western Police Divisions. Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who made the declaration Sunday, said the enhanced security measure will last initially for 14 days. He said the measures were necessary to address long-standing and entrenched crime and public disorder within these communities. The objective is therefore to degrade and erode the capacity of criminal organizations to operate and control these spaces and ultimately to provide the space within which law-abiding citizens and regular policing can work together to maintain peace and harmony in these areas. Areas under the state of public emergency are the market and business districts of downtown Kingston, Denham Town, Greenwich Town, Hannah Town, Jonestown, Tivoli Gardens, Whitfield Town, Rosetown and Arnett Gardens. For some time these areas and these parts of the divisions have been exposed to gang violence, significant extortion and general lawlessness and the Chief of Defense Staff Major General Rocky Mead urged citizens to acquaint themselves with the regulations governing the state of emergency. We ask that as you approach these checkpoints that you lower your windows and during the dark uh, periods turn on your roof lights. The more visibility the troops have of who's in the vehicle is the less need there may be to, to stop you and actually check. Major General Meade promised to work closely with the media to provide swift updates on the roads affected during this period. Persons with information about unlawful activities in these communities are being urged to call Crime Stop at 311 or 876 837 8888. Meanwhile, the security forces will be working assiduously to ensure that traffic flows smoothly in the three corporate area police divisions now under a state of public emergency. That's the assurance given by Prime Minister Andrew Holness. He said significant planning had gone into the declaration to include ongoing roadworks in the corporate area and the back-to-school period. The hurricane season and the upcoming Christmas holidays were also part of the planning. Many of the routes um, are, uh, they dissect communities and some of them bypass communities. And so within that, there are options for how the security forces can position their checkpoints without interfering with the flow through. Prime Minister Andrew Holness is in the eastern United States city of New York for the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly, UNGA. Among the activities, Mr. Holness will participate in the Nelson Mandela Peace Summit, 
a series of bilateral discussions with world leaders as well as representatives from the banking and private sectors. In his role as CARICOM chairman, the Prime Minister will launch Caribbean Moves, a spin-off of Jamaica Moves. The Prime Minister is supported by the Foreign Affairs Minister, his Communications Director and Senator Matthew Samuda. National Security Minister Dr. Oris Chang will be in charge of government until Mr. Holness returns on Friday. In other news, more funds are being made available for Jamaica under the International Monetary Fund, IMF's, three-year precautionary standby arrangement. This will come into effect at the end of the fourth review. Considerations by the IMF's Executive Board is tentatively scheduled for November 2018. Upon approval, an additional um, US dollars 226 million will be made available for Jamaica, bringing the total accessible credit to about US dollars 1.2 billion. Mission Chief for Jamaica, Dr. Ramakrishnan, was speaking at Friday's IMF Mission Review press briefing. Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the economy has made significant progress under the Economic Reform Program, ERP, and is pleased that the program is on track. There is projected growth by the PIOJ. We have reserves which are ahead of program targets. I believe we now stand at about 3.1 billion US dollars. Employment continues to be strong. Inflation continues to be low. Interest rates are at record low. And uh, generally, uh, there is a sense of confidence in the economy. Meanwhile, Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark said the country has met all quantitative performance requirements under the ERP as at the end of June 2018. He added that 21 structural benchmarks under the program were also met to date, with two remaining under the precautionary standby arrangement as at the start of the fourth review. The first of these is the tabling of the Bank of Jamaica Act in Parliament by October of 2018, which the government is on track to meet. And the second is ensuring that the cap on the stock of domestic arrears remains capped at 6.4 billion, which is measured on a monthly basis and which the government continues to meet. And speaking at a town hall meeting hosted by his ministry on Friday, Dr. Nigel Clark said the successful implementation of the economic reform program has enabled the government to double expenditure aimed at improving the standard of living in Jamaica. He noted that allocations to improve the quality of life for the society's most vulnerable increased from $20 billion in the 2015-16 fiscal year to $32 billion this year. Dr. Clark further emphasized that government has also been able to increase capital expenditure on infrastructure developments, such as the ongoing roadworks. We have been able to, in two short years, to almost double capital expenditure from $32 billion in the 2015-2016 financial year to $60 billion in this financial year. That is why we can do what we are doing. And finally, several overseas buyers and local suppliers in the tourism sector are converged at the Montego Bay Convention Center for the Jamaica Product Exchange JPEX trade show. JPEX, which is in its 28th year, started on Sunday with the opening ceremony and continues until Tuesday. The annual event, put on by the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association and the Jamaica Tourist Board, provides the ideal forum for leading suppliers in Jamaica's tourism industry to negotiate and network with overseas buyers. The workshops at this year's staging address critical topics such as marketing small properties, interior decorating, energy efficiency and revenue management. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. No traffic is allowed through the three miles intersection of the corporate area. Motorists coming from Mandela Highway or Spanish Town Road heading towards Halfway Tree may detour along Washington Boulevard. Those heading towards the downtown crossroad area from Spanish Town Road may travel through the communities of Waterhouse or Portmore. The three miles intersection and environs are being upgraded to create a seamless connection between the corporate area and St. Catherine. 
Prime Minister Andrew Holness is now representing Jamaica's interests at the 73rd session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. At home, the Planning Institute of Jamaica is ensuring that we live up to our commitments towards achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. I do have a dream, and I know you have a dream, that we can make Jamaica the place of choice for you to choose to live, to work, to do business, We are going for the Jamaica we want. Making steady progress to achieve the sustainable development goals in our national development plan. Vision 2030 Jamaica. We have teamed up with valued partners working through strong institutions to reduce inequalities in our society. We commit to being responsible in our production and consumption, ensuring we build sustainable communities in harmony with nature. Jamaica is making significant strides in providing quality, lifelong education for all, enabling our people to be engaged in decent work to drive economic growth, equipping men and women with the skills to build resilient infrastructure, promote sustainable industry, foster innovation and utilize new technologies. Urgent action is being taken to manage natural resources responsibly, protecting clean water sources, ensuring access to water and sanitation for all, diversifying to alternative energy sources, conserving our environment and sustaining life below water and on land. Jamaica is making moves to ensure healthy lifestyles for the well-being of our people. We're promoting sustainable agriculture to achieve food security, improve nutrition, and end extreme hunger, putting in the work to end poverty in all its forms. We're on track in achieving our sustainable development goals through realizing our Vision 2030 Jamaica. We will leave no one behind. As we observe Maritime Awareness Week, let's look at the strides our country has made in this burgeoning sector. The seas call them home, home, where the northeast trade winds dance through the sounds of reggae, where the cockpit country shadows the world's fastest man, the vanguard of the Caribbean. The seas call them home, home to Jamaica. Jamaica is the third largest island in the Caribbean and the largest English-speaking island state, with the seventh largest natural harbor in the world, essential for a robust shipping industry. Jamaica also has the second largest transshipment hub in the Caribbean. These developments are driven by a commitment to honor the international maritime conventions that Jamaica has signed, establishing a maturing partnership with the International Maritime Organization, IMO. This 40-year partnership brings consistent advocacy for the maritime interests of Jamaica, the Caribbean and small island developing states, and the least developed countries. The seas carry them on, shaping an expansive and progressive maritime vision, fueling a structure and infrastructure of container crews and bulk cargo ports, maritime administration and ship registration, maritime education and training. This vision led to the expansion and upgrading of port facilities island-wide to capitalize on additional trade and larger ships accessing services through the newly expanded Panama Canal. The expansion positions Kingston as one of the region's major ports. The Port of Kingston is also equipped to offer a range of maritime logistical services, 
For example, operating as the regional hub for vehicles delivered to 23 destinations in Central America and the Caribbean. Through German Ship Repair Services Jamaica, the island also offers wet dock repair services and plans full ship repairs with a floating dry dock. Jamaica's commitment to a greener maritime environment guides its fuel diversification with the use of clean fuels including natural gas. The prevention of maritime pollution is also integral in policy initiatives. As part of this thrust, Jamaica is now acceded to the Ballast Water Management Convention 2004 and is also the lead partnering country in the IMO's Globe Ballast Partnerships Program. Bunkering is another key element of Jamaica's position as a major shipping centre. We supply bunkers not only for vessels calling at Jamaican ports, including cruise ships, but also for those transiting across the wider Caribbean. Falmouth, Montego Bay, Ocho Rios, Port Antonio and Kingston, five cruise shipping ports, with the Falmouth Pier being purpose-built for the largest cruise ships in the world. These major cruise ports offer a full range of cruise passenger facilities and services. Awarded the world's leading cruise destination, Jamaica's unique attractions, diverse tourism and numerous recreational and cultural activities are equal sources of attraction for the creme de la creme of the seas, Royal Caribbean's Harmony of the Seas, the world's largest cruise ship and other major cruise lines. The seas sends them out. Seafarers and shipping staff trained in Jamaica for international service are key to Jamaica's success as a maritime state. The Caribbean Maritime University, CMU, is the sole IMO-recognized maritime training institution in the English-speaking Caribbean for the training of officers. The CMU is now poised to satisfy the region's demands in the expanding maritime and logistics sectors with the opening of five satellite campuses. Through partnership with the Technical Cooperation Division of the IMO, Jamaica helps countries in the region meet their obligations under the International Convention on Standards of Training, Certification and Watchkeeping for Seafarers. Jamaica has also chaired for 10 years at the IMO, the organ responsible for the international rules for standards of training for seafarers. Jamaica is committed to reducing substandard shipping in the Caribbean. To meet this objective, the island has hosted the Secretariat of the Caribbean Memorandum of Understanding on Port State Control, CMOU, since 2004. In addition, Jamaica is host to the International Seabed Authority. 25 states now have permanent missions to support the regulation and control of all mineral-related activities of the authority. Partnering with the IMO Program of Integration for Women in the Maritime Sector, Jamaica has helped to mobilize maritime women in the region and strengthened their contribution to the safety, security and environmental protection of the maritime industry. Jamaica has also hosted the inaugural Regional Women in Maritime Association WEMAC Conference. Its executive is led by a cohort of strong female leaders, including its first president, a Jamaican. The seas carry them through Jamaica's long-standing advantages, highly developed shipping expertise, and a skilled and educated workforce has seen our maritime sector blossom into an invaluable resource for the Caribbean and the region. A maritime state, a maritime home, bridging the IMO with the Caribbean and the Americas. Let's get together and Feel all right. Have you been going through the tedious task of changing your phone contacts from 7 to 10 digits? Watch this next feature for a solution. I am Jerome Campbell, the creator of Code App, and I am a Jamaican tech entrepreneur. I'm from Lawrence Tavern, St. Andrew, so that might qualify me as a, as a countryman. By now, everyone should be aware of this latest sound. Please be advised, 10 digit dialing is now in effect for Code App is a solution for that. Code App 
allows you to automatically update your contacts for 10 digit DAN. It does this automatically and it does it easily. It's available in the Google Play Store by typing in code app, no spaces. The iPhone version will be released shortly. Code app is not just about adding 876. There are value added features to it. The roadmap to add more value added services. I had an issue if I should want to send credit to my wife. I had to go in the phone, copy the number, dial the number before it, dial the amount I want to send after it. So as a technology man, naturally, I'm going to say there's a better way. Code app allows you to easily go in, select the contact, and send off the money. When I started UTech, I thought being in computers involved Microsoft Word, Excel, the browser, stuff like that. But I realized that it's way beyond that. I found a liking to programming. I found that I was good at it. So I continued. The funny thing is, it was about year three or year four. My colleagues were telling me about a profession as a programmer. So in my mind, I'm thinking, I can make money from this. People will pay me to do this. So I continued on that path. I thank my fellow Jamaicans for the support that they have given. It's now number two ranked in that type of app with over 30,000 downloads. And we are going for the number one spot. So we continue to develop it, we continue to make it better, and we continue to make it fit our local context and provide solutions for our local people. I'm Jerome Campbell, and I'm a lecturer at Vocational Training Development Institute, otherwise known as VTDI. Here at VTDI, we offer ICT-based courses to impact an industry. I also teach application development along with other ICT-based courses. I encourage persons to take advantage of these government institutions and these government opportunities because these institutions are here for you. A healthier, happier, wholesome Jamaica. That's the aim of the Jamaica Moves program. It made a stop at a church recently. Get the highlights next. The Yui Mona Bowl came alive with... Ready, Set, Sweat was organized by the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God to promote health and wellness, heeding the Ministry of Health's call for better nutrition and more active lifestyle. Members of the church and the wider public were invited to take part in the day's offerings. We have a lot of things. We have Sajikor here doing a lot of tests free, of course. We have the Heart Foundation. We're doing the BMIs. Everything is going to be massive today. It's all about movements, getting fit and staying healthy. But not only that, the UCKG organizers of the event partnered with the National Blood Transfusion Service, also known as the Blood Bank, to give back. Scores of persons turned out to give the gift of life, and Eagle Allen, blood donor organizer, couldn't be happier. We at the National Blood Transfusion Service only meet about 50% of the demand. So any opportunity that presents itself that will better help Jamaicans, we welcome it. And we commend them on this for reaching out to us, and we hope that other entities follow suit. Let's not forget the cheerful givers. So is this your first time giving blood and how was it? No, it's not my first time, but it's a pleasure for to help to save lives. 
Why did you decide to give blood today? Because I wanted to help others that needed it, because there's a lot of people that needed blood. If we just come together and just donate to others, then we can help the better society. <laughs> And if you think aerobics was the only form of exercise for the day, think again. Persons worked out on the bicycle, the treadmill, and check out the strength training, weightlifting, and even juggling football. It's said that Jamaicans are not getting the required amount of physical activity or nutrition in their daily routine to maintain healthy lives. Dion Keynes from the Ministry of Health shared some pointers. Results of the screenings done here today, for example, the weight checks, the blood pressure checks, the blood sugar checks, those can reveal some very important things. And what it can indicate is that Jamaicans actually need to be more physically active. Just moderate exercise of 30 minutes or more per day can actually help to control your blood sugar and help to reduce your blood cholesterol and help you to control your weight better. So it reduces your risk of many diseases like heart disease, hypertension, or even some cancers. And I just want to urge persons to get checked, get their screenings done. If you cannot afford to see a private doctor, then use the services of the government health clinic. And what of seeking medical advice via the internet? The internet does offer a lot of information in regards to health issues. However, one has to make sure you do check reputable sites and these information should not be used to make your own diagnosis and administer your own treatment. All persons are encouraged to seek the counsel of their medical doctor on all medical issues. Beyond the various health checks, booths at Ready, Set, Sweat also offered hair care, wellness and fitness services. And for your closing advice... You don't pay attention to the body, which is the temple where your spirit resides. And we have a, a duty to protect it. And we protect the body by paying attention to what you put in your no, because if you don't pay attention to that, you're going to be the richest man in the graveyard by drinking all these acid-forming foods. Now remember, stay fit, keep healthy, and take it one pound at a time. Mr. Speaker, the recent attacks on the children of this country is but one example of the direct threat that the criminals pose, not just to the weak and vulnerable, but directly to the future potential of this country. Our children, Mr. Speaker, should not be robbed of their innocence, and certainly they should not be robbed of their lives. Our resolve, Mr. Speaker, must therefore be greater than the resolve of the criminals. And we must demonstrate the resolve to take extraordinary measures in these abnormal circumstances. And we must show as a collective, as a parliament, that we have the stamina to sustain the measures that have been working. Our time here on the station is up, but we are available online 24-7 at your leisure. Visit jis.gov.jm and do join us on all the major social media sites and be sure to download our mobile app from your cell's app store. On behalf of the entire team here at the JIS, I'm Adrian Atkins and thank you for watching.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.